Well, thank you for being here today. I think not everyone could make it, but that's why we record these sessions so that the members can then go back and listen to them when they've finished their workday. It's 9 p.m. there in Spain, right? Yes, now it's in the night <laughs> in Spain. We have had a beautiful day with a little bit of rain that was necessary here in South Spain. And now it's very cold here outside, but in the studio it's wonderful. Oh, good. Excellent. Excellent. So do you want to introduce yourself to everybody? Yes. What can I say about me? First of all, my name is Esther. Esther Miranda. <laughs> And I am a painter from Spain. I have been uh, living in Germany for almost seven years. And I have developed my uh, career, my painter career uh, in Germany. And I actually work mainly in Germany, no to in America, <laughs> of course, it's nice. And some years ago, I decided uh, was the time to be back at home in Spain. And um, the light here is wonderful to paint in winter, in summer, and that's make a big difference in life of a painter, the light. It really is. You hear those sort of comments from painters and the difference between painting in the north and then in the south of yes. Europe really is different. Were you finding that the light was making the colors like cooler in Germany? What were you feeling? I feel that... This is a question that the gallerist made me one time because he asked me, why are you so colorful? And I told him, I am so colorful because here winter is very grow. grow. We don't have too many hours of light and the color are not so brilliant like in South Europa, like in Spain mm -hmm. and especially in Andalusia. And I need the color of the sun. For this, as I don't have it, I need to bring to my paintings. This is why I need the color and the good feelings and bring the, uh, I think that like a painter, sometimes you bring to the paintings the thing that you are missing. Mm. And I was missing the light of the suit. So I start to paint, especially with a very strong um, interest in light and in color, because it was something that many days uh, felt me in Germany. Gosh, that is so interesting. And we have another painter here, Marilyn, and I know she is so very focused on color and light. Please feel free, Marilyn, if you do have questions as well, or you want to share anything to join in. Great. <laughs> yeah, that is so interesting. And these little insights hearing this, I mean, you would never think of that if you're not a painter and you're perhaps haven't seen the difference in light living in two different areas and maybe people have lived in two different areas but they're not tuned in in the same way a painter might be to really know that that's what they're responding to. I find that um, we have different ways to see the things. Before I was a painter I was a philosophy teacher yes. and my way to see the thing was different. No, uh, the feeling is that I see more color in the same color that I saw years before. So it's a, it's a different uh, way to look. It's a different view. It's a different attention. I think the point is the attention because when you are a painter, you are more, you look more carefully to the things. You are a good observer of the nature, of the people, of all that is around you. So I think uh, when you are an artist, and even an architect is another kind of art, or a writer, the creative minds are able to see things that people with uh, normal work don't have the time to look so deeply. This is my point. Perhaps another artist is different, but I think in myself has been a change years, mm. a lot of years ago, of course. I think that's a very astute observation. And in this membership, we've spoken about slowing down to really see. And a lot of what we've been talking about is, well, how do you see? And I think that is the gift that strong paintings bring to us is that 
time and observation that you have spent bringing the way of seeing as a visual language to people who don't have the time or to allow them to see things in different ways. It's a very powerful way of communicating. Yes, I think you are right. And even uh, when I paint, I make it for myself always. But mm. the most interesting thing that I have found when I paint is that after I have painted, people can connect and can feel what I has been feeling while I was painting. And when I paint, the time is uh, stop it. It's not time. Mm. It's like and a space, a time without time, and it's really a very deep moment, very deep concentration. And the most interesting happened to me when uh, one of my collector um, told me one day that when he be, he came back at home after a very busy day working and came to the place where he sit with the sofa, yeah, um, and see my painting, <laughs> he said. Immediately, I feel peace. I feel so quiet. Mm. Everything is outside. And I am absolutely relaxed uh, looking at the painting that you have spent. And I have a very special connection, not with you, because I am not talking to you, but with myself. I can't think with your painting. I, I say, wow. <laughs> Wow, what a big compliment. Yeah, I'll say. It's so precious when the collector actually communicates that with you as the artist because I'd imagine that that feeling is had in many scenarios but you don't get to hear that story and it's great to bring that back full circle because sometimes it probably feels like you're shouting into an empty room. Yes, yes, it's true. For me, like artists, it's a... It's a big present, it's a gift. When a collector they tell me something about the painting that I have painted, how it taught to him, how it helped him to think sometime, uh, in something that he has not been thinking in a lot of time. And it's not uh, yes, uh, because I have painted it intentionally to develop in, it, in him something or in her something. It's just that it's like a room, a room uh, without loud, without sound, uh, with silence. When somebody uh, go and cook and look to a painting and feel, okay, I am alone, I am by myself with my thoughts. And that's when I, I, I found I found then that the connection, the communication was right, was in both sides. I have a lot. We have a lot. Mm. It's nice. For yeah. Me. Oh, that is beautiful. Um, I love how we've jumped so deep into the philosophical side and light and color. Can you walk us through the inspiration behind your current work and talk a little bit about the motivation and what, what you're painting right now? Yeah. In this moment, in this moment, right, in this moment, I am painting this. <laughs> this is behind me. I don't know if you can see it. Yes, we can. Yes, you can. Uh, it's um, the painting that is with uh, the street uh, of Heidelberg. Heidelberg uh, is in Germany. It's a beautiful city where I has been living for years. And uh, a gallery asked me about the idea to make an exhibition with the idea of self-portrait. Uh -huh. So... I think, wow, I love when somebody told me, can you, what do you think about this uh, item? And I thought, okay, when you make a self-portrait, you are not just reproducing a painting, a photo. No, it's more. You have to dig to know what is inside. It's like with the portrait. It's not, for me, it has no sense when you just copy a photo. A portrait has to be a representation and a deep uh, understanding of the person that you are painting. It's more than just a photo. It's something more intellectual. And when they ask me about a self-portrait, I think, okay, what represents me? Me painting, of course, <laughs> in the process. And I have chosen um, 
uh, term that I like, especially this is Heidelberg, because it's a city where I have started to um, exhibit my paintings. And for me, emotionally, it's very, uh, very strong, the feeling. And there is a, a group of person that always sit around um, a sculpture that was in the street. And everybody from different nationalities, from different background, sit around the sculpture and read, cook the, uh, look the phone, or oh, yes, just talk. And for me, it was always the uh, representation of the together of the humanity. Mm. Because came people from around the world. Hyderabad is very popular. It's a city where came a lot of people uh, around the world. And can see people from different nationalities sitting together, taking a, a little time. It was for me always very exciting. So I decided to paint it. Um, I love to paint people. That is uh, one of my main thema because people for me is one of the most interesting thing in the world. <laughs> for this, I used to paint it, but I paint people just as I remember it. Because the theme behind people is memory for me. And I have been working with this theme about memory uh, for a long time. Because for me, all is uh, around this tema. Memory, how we remember things, is just a reality, uh, or reality is a construction. It's something that we made with the experience that we have had, how we have feeling it. For me, uh, Heidelberg is always a positive feeling. It's a positive memory, even though I don't remember a lot of things of it. Course, but when I paint something like this, I have just the memory of the sculpture and I remember some detail of the people, the light in the shoulders or in the hair, or it's just because it was flower around it or it was a sunny day. It's memory and all my painting is built with this same idea idea of memory, of uh, fragments of memory, what we remember of uh, our last uh, meeting. Perhaps we remember of a person, the, the voice, the bad English that she was speaking, <laughs> <laughs> the phone, or yes, how she was smiling, or how um, Larissa has, I am going to remember of this encounter, of this meeting, how you, Larissa, has found immediately a solution to the technical problem that we have had in the first moment, and always with a, uh, with a smile. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, no, it's very interesting, this topic of memories, and I know when we spoke initially, you'd spoken about the idea of the fragmentation and how we can only take in so much so we have these frames or these filters in which we remember the these different pieces someone else might have remembered like oh my gosh Larissa doesn't have her technology lined up <laughs> <laughs> but your memory is different but this idea of fragmentation of memory I know is very strong in a lot of your work yes it's one of the uh, it's, it's like the basic the basic in uh, about everything is growing because I told you that I am working too with the Tema Sea. I am working with Mediterranean, with the uh, ocean, with water. Mm -hmm. Yes. But when you paint sea paintings or landscape with sea, it's too the, the same idea. It's how I remember sea, how I feel. Oh, on the theme of fragmentation, I'm. I'm really fascinated how uh, when given this topic of self-portrait, you rather than just having a, you know, this is what I look like painting, you you fragmented it into your memories and, and experiences that were powerful for you personally and things that, you know, aligned with your values. And so that self-portrait becomes a history of, of your memories. I think that's a really, really beautiful abstraction of the concept. Hmm. Thank you. I think uh, memory is the thema more important that we always uh, think because uh, we put it uh, i put it in painting and i work all my work 
work with this idea and with the idea of fragmentation because really our memory work like that work like that normally when we are healthy we just remember after after they the color of the eyes of someone or the color of the dress but we probably has forget the um I don't know how was the hand or uh, another things in the person. So we really re remember fragments. The fragments, uh, our mem uh, our scenes came with um, different inputs that we become uh, of a person, and our um, brain put it all together and give it give us an image, uh, a picture. Yeah, finished yes. product. It's all put together, and this is. It, 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 it's a it's a um like a it's a representation of the fragments as a new experience because then people in the present time would be looking at it and fragmenting it in their own ways as well yes 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 it's true it's that is the the yeah as i say the idea and even though uh when when we see a person that is ill and have a timer we see that how again the memory is fragmented. It's not something continuous. I remember a part, but not another part, and that is subjective. It's not something that uh, is objective. It's something that you don't know why can remember a part and cannot remember the meeting of yesterday, for example. I play with all this history. I make a, a, a an. I play with all this history and I want to put it all together in a painting. Uh, for this, everything is fragmented. It's not complete. Yeah. That's a little bit about the art. Now, um, with your background as a philosophy teacher, I mean, that's a very interesting background. How has that and your learning and your way of thinking about the world informed your practice as a painter? I think that in our life, all and write and read and make us wealthier so more rich and for me my background in philosophy in philosophy is something that has enriched me give me a lot of things uh, for example when i when i look at people i try to understand the background the culture and um, have a more more group ah one moment please <laughs> the tongue I yeah, think something is true. <laughs> I think I know what you're saying, like a more global vision of human nature yes, that yes. is outside of culture. Yes, that is the, that is just what, uh, what I want to say. The, um, the thinking is more global and I understand probably deeply uh, the culture because I take valor, value of all different culture. And I find the beauty of the art of every culture. And the art is literature, is painting, is philosophy, is everything, is the music too. And this uh, global view, uh, I think is something that is in my painting, is something that uh, in my painting has to be everything that I am, what I am. One day I was told too, that look in my painting, you can have have a good idea of the kind of person that I am. And I say, yes, <laughs> you can see that with a color painting, I can't be a sad person. Mm -hmm. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's all together. My background to uh, teach me that nothing is completely definitive and that you have to be very critical with your own work because everything has to be developed improve, be better, because you can't be happy with the first thing that you make. So be a philosopher, teacher first, make me more um, strict with my work, more, um, yes, more hard. So uh, my paintings when are outside of my studio, have to be a time with me and I have to be absolute happy with them before they go and always looking for new solution new themes uh, improve uh, the things that they think okay but what happened if i make this 
what could happen is I change this. Philosophy teach me you can stop. It's not allowed. You have to go far. And far means be a better painter. Be the better painter that you can be. And that's, I suppose, is for the long, uh, as long as my life. So yeah. this is what I could say. This is the, the, the important, the most important thing that philosophy teach me. What a great thing, because what I really notice in artists that I consider to be the best is that they are always searching, always questioning, always how could this be better? How could I improve the language? Whether it's painting or writing or music. Yes. And yes. It's, it's in that search, the constant looking and questioning and searching, or you happen to end up with some, some products of the paintings, but it's the search that's kind of the, the leader, right? Yes, yes, mm. absolutely. And I think that when you are an artist in any camp, in any field, in any field, when you are an artist, you have to be, well, you have to be open to the reality that is happening in that moment in the world, because you can't be close, like in a monastery or something like that. You have to be open to the world. You have to let a load the thing that is happening outside came to you and you give them an interpretation mm -hmm. in the of the art. When came the time of COVID, of the pandemic, in the first moment, my first feeling was blocked. And then later I said, no, I can't be blocked. I have to make things as they came. And I have to take the thing as they came. And in that moment, I was not able to paint big paintings because I have the feeling of I have one day. So I immediately, the feeling of immediately. So I have started to develop painting that I can start and finish in the same day. No pressure, no stress, just enjoy. In the first moment, of course, I don't well, I, I was not thinking about sell the painting. No, I was painting the painting just for me. <laughs> the other time came later. But the first moment was that I need to feel myself good, make something positive each day. Mm. Make something positive for me was painting something with brilliant color, red, yellow, positive color in a small format, mm. 20 centimeter for 20 centimeter. And, they, and this step by step, make me feel really, really very good. And can see the thing with a bright perspective and let me uh, start to paint again in the big paintings. That is medium format. I paint some time in big uh, painting, two meters, two meters, some things like that. But in the first moment when came the, cho the shock, everybody need to stop, think about the life, rethinking and um, rebuild themselves. I think so many of us relate to that. It was like there were moments when lockdown first occurred that it was minute by minute, hour by hour, you know, just this can't think beyond an hour, let alone a day, which was something that was so new to so many of us to even uh, think like that. So for you to be able to harness that and keep taking those steps forward and say, well, this, this has influenced me in this way and here's what I can produce and still as a response to my environment and the global environment and this craziness that has happened. I personally totally relate to that like day by day. I couldn't think of planning anything beyond that very day. And I love how you had this inclination to go to a smaller format too, because that was something that you could accomplish in that, that unit of time that felt imaginable in in those circumstances we all found ourselves in have you ever or have you thought of exhibiting some of your written works that had to do with what you know about philosophy and what you've taught in combination with the paintings and some of your exhibits no because uh, art different language and sometimes of course when i am thinking about a philosophical term, uh, term, like, I, I don't know what means uh, human being, 
uh, how we, uh, where, where do we go, which is the direction of the humanity, or what are we doing with this emergency? Of course, all of these are philosophical terms that actually all of us are related to. Of course, there is more old philosophical term. This is the philosophical term of the of always, as I say, ethical, political, uh, metaphysic. But no, I never have think to to write something, for example, in in a painting, or to put a title in a painting that is related with a philosophical book or thinking. No, because it's it's like uh, another language. When I have a start to paint. It's because I have the feeling in philosophy, uh, there is thing that you can say with word, there is thing that is necessary to have the intuition, intuitions, yes. Mm -hmm. And I have the feeling, I have had the feeling that some of the most important thing was not possible. I was not able to say it with words because it's something that we have the intuitions. It's something that we can communicate with music more easily or with a picture. And when I want to talk about humanity, for example, for me it's more easy to paint something that is related with what means an human being, what is the essential of the humanity. Uh, for me it's more easy to communicate something without words, just that we connect with a feeling, that with words. For this, no, I, I'm not interested to mix these two kind of words because for me are two words. Two words that sometimes is together. As I say, with the term of memory, this is two philosophical tema, the idea of memory and the idea of the uh, construction of the reality. This is one of the basic of the philosophical tema and was especially important in the 20th century. But it's not something that I want to put names or because I don't want that someone have to know about philosophy to have the connection. I want a more direct connection. And the language that everybody understands around the world is color, form, and something that is not color, not for, it's just the um, complete painting. Wonder then if you have an opinion about the pressure artists are under to have written statements that are pretty evolved that are supposed to enrich the viewer's experience of their painted works. Yeah, we can hear you, but I think because she's going like through a few different speakers. Sure, yeah. sure. So Marilyn's asking what your thoughts are on the pressure, the way that artists are expected to write statements about their work and their pieces and how sometimes those are actually stronger than the works themselves, I think is maybe part of that too. Is it, do, did I capture that, Marilyn? Well, more that I feel like if the work falls short, that's, there seems to be a bit of a pass for yeah. that as long as, you know, the artists can articulate, you know, almost fill in the gaps for a, a work that isn't great necessarily with a strong written statement and that the written statement doesn't necessarily um, line up with what the work is emitting that, you know, what that work feels like or the people, you know, the viewers are interpreting. Mm. What can I say to you when I, I have a really uh, very short statement because I like the idea that the painting talk for me without words. But in any case, you are right. When you say something is necessary, uh, can say something for help people understand what um, is behind the painting that they are seeing. And sometimes people is asking me, Oh, you are always painting people, uh, people in different situations, people together. Uh, and why are you painting now two sea paintings? Why are you painting now the sea? And I say, for me, it's absolutely relate in the meaning that is something that I am especially worried about is the um, um, climate. The problem of the climate catastrophic. Uh, here in Spain, we have a very uh, very big problem, especially in South Spain, with the rain. There is no rain. We don't have water. And 
this make me have the feeling to to have to paint something that represents it, uh, linking to the idea of memory. And Marilyn, you have to to know, like me, like painter, uh, painters when we paint, we always make a kind of self portrait. And when I paint a sea painting, I am uh, painting to a little bit self portrait in the meaning that is paint. I am painting something that is relevant for me. This is something that is in my head uh, very strong. The tema of water, the, the tema of problem. How can we clean oceans? How can we clean um, uh, the water of the river that is contaminate? How can we make uh, stop all this problem that we have with climate change? But again, the tema is who am I? I am a Mediterranean girl. So Mediterranean is this the sea that is um, border my my side of Spain. A Mediterranean Sea is Spain, France, Italy. So Morocco is all a beautiful uh, area that is linking to our culture, the Mediterranean culture, the way to life, the um, the way we are relate and is in, in in our edm so in our uh, chromosome <laughs> dna in our yeah <laughs> yeah so I, I hope you can see it and of course i have to paint what touch me in each moment people touch me for obvious reason and see is touching me in in this in this tema too in a, a tema with clima uh, of the um, problem that we uh, um, energy, new energy, how we can make it more clean, more sustainable, and for this, it's all related. It's memory. Mm. All is memory. Okay. And landscape. Yes. Oh, we gonna say something, Sarah? Yeah, I was gonna say something I really love about your sea paintings is that they reflect your your concern about the climate change emergency but they also they're they're like a, a, a you know a love offering to the ocean that it's not a, a negative depiction of the ocean and being unhealthy it's it's this beautiful manifestation of of how the water can be and should be and so i really like the art that is being created uh in response to to climate change is a topic that really interests me personally and that i follow and something that i myself personally feel out of alignment for with a lot of the art that i see on this topic is that it it's very much consumed with the grief and consumed with the uh, ac accurate reflection of of just how harmed things are and so i what i particularly love about your your series is that it's rooted in your love and this manifesting this vision of healthy water. And so I really align with that personally. So, so thank you for creating those paintings. Mm. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I think that when we really love something, uh, we have two ways to see the life uh, or to represent it. We can focus ourselves in things that is not working, or we can focus ourselves in the beauty. And the beauty for me is the answer. I think that when we see how beautiful is the sea, how beautiful is the clean water, we we have the feeling that we have to protect it. And I really don't want to have something that uh, have uh, I don't know rabies on the on the uh, sand on the beach. No, I, I don't want to see uh, dirty things. I want to remember that it's beautiful and. Beauty is something that is related with ethic, 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 and um, aesthetic. is very, very close. Hmm. Oh, that's and a great. This is one of my tips, and for this, I am always focusing myself in the positive things. The thing is more powerful when we talk about beauty. That's when we talk about disaster, because when we talk about beauty, all of our connect has a beautiful feeling of we have something sacred. Sacred? Yes. Haley. Sacred. Haley? Yes. Sacred. sacred. Yeah. So it's, it's a different way uh, to connect. That is my feeling. Of course, there is wonderful uh, artists that um, 
focus it in the other ways and make masterpiece. For example, Goya, the Spanish painter, with his uh, dark painting that is so terrible and used to critic something that was wrong. But the way has a lot of different facets, and each one choose which is the most interesting facet for him or for her. And I have choose the beauty to create. Yeah. At least by the moment. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and I, I, that's a very interesting statement because, you know, uh, the, the art world is so big and there are so many different facets and there's so many yes. different players and, and viewers. And, and so I think it's important that there is that biodiversity of, of what people, which part they're, they're, which part of the big jewel there, which facet are they reflecting on. And yet, like you said, I mean, it can certainly change, but uh, I think, I think that uh, that's an interesting observation because not all art is intended to be that or to be, you know, political or to be anything. It's, it's, it all has its place. And I think it all aligns like as, as you're sounding like so much with the authenticity of your experience and how you see and how you want to communicate with the world. Yes, I think I find that art means just that individuality, the uh, capacity of each artist to interpret uh, the world in his, his or her own way. Mm -hmm. And this is something that makes all of us more rich. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. definitely. All the different perspectives. Uh, are also important if, if as long as everyone's open to and, and art because it doesn't have that initial barrier in so many ways of language has that ability to bridge that other people can access and maybe they don't you know because people will often say oh I just know when I love a piece of art because I have like an emotional reaction that yes. you know that is a first first level which is you know ideally what all artists would like have happened but it's got to reach the right niche the right people in the right way um who yes. are going to respond that way and there needs to be something for everybody okay. i think the same that you hmm. i am absolutely right with you <laughs> <laughs> oh does anyone have any further questions we've got like 10 minutes left here um anyone else like to ask a question from Mar yes go ahead samara um, you were talking originally about how much you enjoy the light where you are in Spain. I was wondering if there were other places you've been where um, the, the light has struck you in a way that you've wanted to paint there. Uh, again, I have, I don't know why I have problem uh, with uh, the other people when told because I don't hear very good. Larissa, so, you. yeah, I'll. I'll translate. <laughs> so, so Samara is asking, she found it, she really liked the way that you were drawn to the light in your part in the south of Spain. Are there other places you visited where you were intrigued by the light in, in its different forms? The light is, all, is always something really interesting. For paint, I like the south of Spain, but I have enjoyed a lot and I have learned a lot about paint in different places, in different, for, for example, in South Germany is absolutely different to paint in North, North Germany. The light is completely different and the feeling that you have with the light is something that you put in the painting. It's not something that is um, thought or program, it's something that appear. It's like if one day uh, you wake up, you have a nice coffee, and the other day, the coffee is burned and tastes horrible. The start of the day is completely different. In the day, you are uh, making everything different. But the feeling, how you start, is different. The feeling when you have here in Spain a sunny day is completely different than when you have a great day. I was kind of wondering, Larissa, about like if she had a fav other favorite places. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Do, do you have other favorite places with light? I really like paint with light. <laughs> so I have um, the feeling to paint for paint here is, is a really very good one. But I think that each place gives you a different perspective. And like artists, 
to have the opportunity to have different experience and being in different place is something that um, proves yourself and make you feel different things. And this is always interesting. Like an artist, a regularity of uh, um, uh, each day is the same, is not interesting. You need inputs. You need things that make you feel different. When you change your studio, your atelier, uh, it's always, um, you make always the new place a little bit your place, even though you are going to be uh, painting there just two months, for example, because you are in a residence or you are, um, uh, I don't know, keeping uh, the atelier of a friend that came to your atelier to paint and you decide you go to the north to paint something different because you want to have the experience. So every experience with light for me is interesting and helps you to see things differently. Mm. This is my experience. <laughs> it sounds like... I am not sure if I have uh, answered the question. Well, it, sound, it sounds what I'm, what I'm hearing is that while you enjoy and, and the experience of the light in all these different places is your heart and you just really like the light where you are in the south of Spain. Yes, but it's interesting to, be, to, to have the experience in different places. It's like have always the same spaghetti. It's better when one day you take lasagna, for example. <laughs> yeah. <Or salad. laughs> the change. Yeah. Yes. And I've, I've got to say, just spending a lot of time recently, you know, in the Netherlands, my brother lives there in the south, that when they talk about the golden light there, it's real. I have never experienced such golden light. Yeah. Yes, yes. First time when I was uh, in the um, frontier with the Dinamark, with Denmark. Oh, yeah. Uh, in the north, 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 north yeah. of Germany. It was in the first moment absolute astonish with the light because the color of the uh, sunrise was so absolutely amazing, so different from here, that it gave me a lot of um, inspiration and light because I always look how the nature combines, uh, changes the color, put the color together. I think nature is the big master mm -hmm. for a painter to know how uh, colors work together and always look to the sky is a very good idea. And look how it changes the light. Yeah, yeah, always changing, always different, but somehow in specific geographic areas with the wavelength and the positioning, there is a general feeling, even though that within yeah. itself changes. Yeah. yeah. Your, your insights uh, just remind me of a story I read years ago, so I'm probably fuzzy on the details, but Anne Truitt, who was a sculptor based uh, near where I live, near Washington, in DC, she had a residency and I think it was Japan. And so she built a sculpture and she custom mixed the colors and then she shipped it back home to DC. And it was totally wrong because she had chosen the colors for the light in, I think it was Japan and the, the color, you know, temperature was so different there. And so she wrote about it and how specific the experience of that sculpture was to the light where she made it. And so what you're, you're saying really reminds me of that story, which I've always loved. Isn't but it's true, in, uh, and I think in, um, in a sculpture, especially because the three dimensions plays with the light wonderfully, and the shadow, uh, shadow no, that is German, and the shadows, mm -hmm. <laughs> the, shadows the light, all the color that is in between, and you have the feeling, and uh, this is completely different when you are in a place or in another place. And of course, the experience, uh, when you paint or when you make something artistic, you can have one small plan, but you are sure that in the process it is going to change. It can't change because the light has changed. It can't change because your feeling has changed. You never, or, or at least, at least by myself, I never finish a painting as I have thought in the first moment that is it is going to feeling. Because I think it would be no interesting. The interesting is the process, how the feeling, how you are reacting to the color that you are putting in the uh, in the canvas, and how a color is asking you for the next for the next color. So it's a play. It's like mm -hmm. a play. We are, 
I think artists, we are the artists, are always child, children. We are always playing, like the children, like the babies. So it's um, we are really very lucky because we are always enjoying playing, reacting to what is happening. Mm. Oh, as as English as your second or third or fourth language, the way you speak about this so eloquently is just beautiful. It's lyrical to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> My English is quite limited, so I try mm. to look the way that you can understand me. I know I have to improve a little bit, but this is in the in the good uh, list of the things for 2023. Improve my English, my pronunciation. Oh, your English is great. Your English is fantastic. And what I what I like about the way you're explaining things is maybe if you don't have the range of words, you're constructing a feeling out of other concrete words that you do have. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yes. Well, um, oh, I was going to say one more thing before we wrapped up here. Um, oh, yeah, just just speaking back to sculpture and Sarah's comment there on the light, you know, it, it is, I can see how that would have an, you know, because if you've got a painting, you can control the light within a, a, a residence or a museum and you can choose the temperature of the light, but the sculpture is revealed only through light. And so mm -hmm. if it is, you know, even if it is, it is harder to control the lighting, even in an internal setting for sculpture and you know a shadow goes in one different place and it tells a completely different story or the color the temperature if it was an outdoor piece I can see how that would be as if someone tipped the wrong color paint over it yeah yes yes always is the it's the same with the painting too I have changed the light in the studio um, a month ago and it's incredible because we had a good, uh, I had a good light. Now I have a better light and you can be more subtle. You have found, I have found things that before was not possible mm. because uh, the light uh, of the day changes. And it's good when you can have two a uh, light that is continuous in the day and in the night. So you can see not so many difference between the night and the day right. when you are working. So light is the basic for an artist. Yeah. I think all, of, all the artists, uh, I think it's a tema uh, that all, all of us, all the artists is in common, the importance of the light to paint and to, to see what rebel or what we don't want to be rebelled. Yeah, most certainly. And the, the more awareness and the, like you said, the, how can I understand the light better? How can I make my light better? How can I work with light? What is it telling me? And that constant search is, yeah. is the beautiful, beautiful part of a great artist's oeuvre. I had just one quick question because I we talk a lot about collecting here in, in the Collectors Club. And so I love hearing the artist's perspective about collectors. And like you mentioned that lovely piece of feedback one of your collectors had shared with you. What are some of the things that you particularly enjoy in working with collectors? Like for, for new collectors in the membership who may not have, have a lot of experience working with artists, as an artist, what are some things that you really love it when collectors do this, you know, other than buy all your artwork? <laughs> so are there certain, you know, traits or certain behaviors that are really appreciated from, from the perspective of the artist side of things? I, I am really lucky because uh, the art first, for example, give me the possibility to meet some of my collectors and talk to them. And I always hear what he, what, uh, what they have to say, what they want to know. And it's something that go in two directions. It's not that I paint uh, what a collector wants to, it's just um, the, my collector are so interesting that they tell me, I love your work. I would like something in this direction. What could you make? Freedom, of course, please, Esther, freedom. Even when I have been commissioned for make a portrait, they always want uh, from me uh, freedom so that I can paint what I want. And sometimes talk to the collector, know what they are collecting, which, which uh, are the other artists that they are collecting. 
and even sometime I was so lucky that I was invited uh, to visit uh, the collection, to visit the, the place where uh, mm, where my painting is hanging together with the other artists, some of them are a college that I admire very deep. So it's a big surprise when uh, when I think uh, or when I see one of my paintings together with someone that I say, wow, he's mm -hmm. so good or she's so incredible. Or can uh, see how uh, an sculpture passed together, work together with a painting and see the space because uh, the space creates an, an atmosphere that has to reflect with the collector. And when you see which are the paintings that they are um, buying, that they are collecting, you can have a very good idea of who is this person, which are they, uh, his interests or her interests, what is behind. And I have had really very, very interesting uh, conversation with my collector and the best of all, usually not about money, always about art. And that is something that both of us are always with a smiling and in the conversation and speaking about actual painter, um, old painter, old master. And that is really interesting for me. Collector is something like in all the history of the art. It's a very important part of the, of the art because what could we have made without the, uh, I don't know, with the um, collector in uh, Italy, mm -hmm. for example. Yes. We are really very lucky that they have commissioned work to Michelangelo, to uh, all the mm -hmm. big artists, all the big names. Thanks to this collector, we yeah. are so lucky to have this big patrimony of the humanity now with us. We, of course, uh, need them not to create, but for live. <laughs> so, yeah. That's what I say. No, it's true. And I, I think I've spoken about before this triangle where the artist, the dealer, and the client are all equally as important and all influential. Yes. And so that speaks perfectly to that because a lot of newer collectors can be intimidated, like, oh, what should I like? Or, you know, should I be following this trend or that trend? Whereas they don't realize the power they have that in supporting artists that they believe in and yes. react to, yes. that they are influencing as strongly as the artists creating the work because they're an allow enabling you to be able to keep creating. Yes, I have read, um, one history about a couple in, in the state, in the state, in the 60 years, a couple of people that was working for the post, for, um, they are uh, normal people with a normal salary, and they have started to collect small things, but they have so good eye that they have uh, had one of the best collection in America. Mm -hmm. And they have donated after they pass, uh, they have donated, I don't remember who, which museum, but they have such an incredible piece of art, a lot. They live in a small uh, house, but they have bought all the things that they love. They mm -hmm. have made something absolutely incredible because they are now dead. They, know, they are not living longer, but in the museum, there is a plaque with their name and they're thankful for all the good painter, uh, good, good paintings that they have uh, bought and uh, give uh, like a present to all the Americans that visit that museum. Mm, beautiful. And a lot of people have enjoying it. Now, I don't remember the name of this couple, but when I read the story, for me, it was absolutely incredible how people uh, with not a big fortune can be so important in the life of a lot of people. Yeah. Not just because they go to uh, Andy Warhol or Basquiat or one of the big, big names of the saints on, on the 60s, but because they bought it because they love it, because this art represents them, not because they want to sell them to mm -hmm. be rich. No, yes, because this art talk about themselves, mm -hmm. so the collector, not the artist. So, I like this history because I think, wow, 
it's amazing when people make uh, this kind of thing. Can you imagine how many good museums we can have with interesting art? Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Amen to that. that and, and that's what we are hoping and doing with our membership is, is sharing that possibility, you know, that it's, you don't yeah. have to be, um, you don't have to be somebody with millions and billions of dollars. You can be someone who is intentional and cares. Yes. And even if you're just influencing the people around you, just having this, these kinds of conversations, we can allow the art world to be more accessible and more meaningful to more people. Yes, this is great because even though when you don't think about uh, donate it after you pass to a museum, the painting that you buy is with you all the life. You can change all the decoration at home, but this painting or this sculpture that you have chose is a part of your life. It's experience. Mm -hmm. It's a part of who you are, who you mm -hmm. was, and who you are going to be. So it's something that is around the life. So. Yeah. Of Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today, Esther. Liza, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. and I'm sure that a lot thank of people a lot of people will enjoy the conversation in the recorded version as well. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you for thank inviting you. me to this conversation. I have enjoyed a lot to talk to you. Yeah. to all people that was asking me even though to, we can hear very good sometimes but i hope everybody has enjoyed so much as i do yeah well thank you so much <laughs> thank you all right esther um we, i will be in touch with you and everyone we will see you next week <laughs>